Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Tammy from Nutmeg Notebook. We're so happy to have you with us today. Um, today is one of our um, classes for the plant living made easy. Today we're going to be talking all about whole food plant based travel, which I know so many of you ask me questions about that. So my husband Tom and I have been whole food plant based since 2013. And we have not let that stop us from traveling. So we have done international traveling over these past 11 years, very successfully. And we have also done a lot of road trips. And so we are um, excited to be able to share with you what we have discovered works well for us. And we're hoping that these tips, hints and tricks will help you also have successful plant-based traveling. Just because we eat differently from most of society does not mean that our life stops. We get to keep going and traveling and seeing things and we can do it in a healthy way. I'm also doing this series with my dear friend, Sia Hurst from 60 Living and she is joining us from Greece. Hello, Sia. Hello, how are you doing today, Tammy? Doing really, really well. And so, so happy to be able to do this. Um, and since we're talking about travel, we should tell the folks that traveling is how you and I met. That's right. That's right. We met when you were on a cruise with the, with the NHA and Lisa McCarl and had a little downtime in Athens and uh, spent a lovely day together, the four of us exploring and we traveled with food and we had a picnic, whole food plant-based, SOS free on the beach. We did, then that was all you're doing because you made all of that incredible food for us and that was just fabulous. Um, I, don't, I don't know if Tom's gonna be able to find the picture or not, we can try because um, we didn't have that in the queue, but, um, but that was wonderful. And we were able to do that in, in successfully in part to you because uh, you did make food for us and met us at the airport, which like, who does that? And, <laughs> um, but here we are. What year was that, Sia? Was that 2022 or 2021? 20, no, I, it was 2021 when we met in October. Yeah. And then it was yeah. February 2022 when we first appeared together uh, on YouTube and um, began our journey. Yeah, so it's been, it's just been amazing. And so we wanna, we wanna help everybody. So give me a month and a year for those. For those. Uh, October of 2021. We, we want to be able to share with everyone today how we can successfully um, travel and not compromise how we want to eat and be successful at it and still enjoy our trip. And so uh, I think that the first time that Tom and I went, I had adopted this lifestyle in March of 2013. And in May, we had to go on a road trip. His brother um, was having some major surgery and we had to, to travel to go, to go be with him. And, um, I was a little frantic, I have to say, wondering how I was going to do this eating mm. on the road, you know? Um, but I figured it out and, and I did it and we were successful and it worked. And I kind of overdid it. I've learned how to scale back. I've learned how to do it. Well, you know me, um, when I'm in, I'm all in. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so, so we'll talk today about some different things that you can do, both for air travel and also for going on road trips, because you guys, you can you can do both. And what you have to decide, I think, at the beginning, and I think you'll agree with me, Sia, is the meals don't, when you're traveling, the meals don't have to be perfect. And, no. they, you know, you might have a, a meal that's just rice and steamed vegetables. Oh, well, at least you could get rice and steamed vegetables, right? And so... Right. I mean, we eat like kings and queens, vegetable kings and queens, 
plant-based kings and queens while we're at home. And when we're traveling, we're there for the experience to, you know, um, maybe we're going to a different country. We want to experience the culture there. We want to take in all the history. We want to learn as much as we can, have fun, do things. That is our primary focus. And the food is secondary. The food is fuel for us. That doesn't mean that we don't enjoy a, a fabulous meal because we do. I mean, I'm a, I love to cook, um, but I know that I can eat all of those goodies when I'm at home and I'm not expecting to find them all when I'm traveling. And also sometimes if we have to skip a meal, hunger is not, um, you know, an emergency. It's hunger not an emergency. Hunger is not an emergency. It is not. not. And, no. And so we've also learned that as well. But here's the thing with some pre-planning, you guys, you can still have an amazing experience and you can have some delicious food. Um, I've In all of our travels, there has only been one time that we were in a restaurant that could not accommodate us. And it's because they didn't really make anything from scratch there. It was kind of, a, they bought a lot of frozen stuff and heat meat. So I can't even say it was a restaurant, but, um, and, and we left, you know, uh, but we went and found a health food store that had, a, a deli and we were able to get a burrito bowl. So, oh, oh Tom's got a picture of us. Woohoo! Can you share? Can oh, you share? Yeah, he's going to share. And so, oh. um, so there's, okay, he's going to share. Go for it. Go for it. Please can tell us what we're looking at. There we I are. know. So see it. Tell everybody where we were. We were on a small secluded beach uh, just underneath the Temple of Poseidon at the, at Cape Sunio, here at the tip of Attica. So we drove to the temple and explored up there, came back and found this little beach and laid out a blankie and some goodies and <laughs> just kind of chilled. It was amazing. I was find the, oh, oh. And that was one of I'm my find the temple. Okay, though. he's gonna find pictures of the temple. That you know, what um we had an amazing cruise in Greece, but that day was one of the most special days of that trip for mm -hmm. us. It really was because it was so relaxing, the food mm -hmm. was amazing, amazing, the location was incredible being with you and dominic was just i we felt like we had known you guys forever it was you know? it did feel like that it did yeah it, it did. really did it was so amazing so um well tom's looking for a, a picture i'm going to give you guys some um little tips so one thing that we do when we are going to be traveling whether it's international or we're just you know on a road trip here in the united states is when I know the route we're taking, where we're gonna go. So whether it's on an airplane and going to different airports, I look up and see what kind of food options are available uh, where we are going to be. So be that in um, an airport, you can look up the restaurants, you can find vegan restaurants in the airports or, or vegan options to see what you can find. Sometimes we find a place that has a baked potato, sometimes a place that has a salad. If it's a Mexican restaurant and you can get, you know, you check with them, make sure their beans and rice are not made with um, chicken broth and or lard. Um, you can, you know, get a burrito bowl. Uh, we also will use happy, the happy cow app and you can look on there for restaurants, for um, vegan options. When we have gone to celebrate like an anniversary or something out of town, I've called restaurants ahead of time to see if they, you know, they weren't vegan restaurants to see if they could make us something for um, whole food, plant-based without oil. And we've found places to be extremely accommodating that way uh, here in the United States. And so it just takes a little extra effort and um, you just have to, you know, decide that I have to allow time for that ahead of the trip so that we can uh, do that. We also love to book Airbnbs that have a kitchen 
and um, then we can just go shopping when we get there. So because there isn't a SIA in every town that we go to that's willing to make <laughs> food for us. Um, so, you know, we will, um, if we're staying in a hotel, we do try to book hotel rooms that have at, at the minimum a refrigerator, a little refrigerator and a microwave. Um, but sometimes you don't, you know, you don't have that available to you, but we try. And so then we also will take advantage of the concierge services and we'll go there and ask them for recommendations. We'll tell them, you know, we eat vegan. Can you recommend any place to us? Or we'll ask, is there a health food store close by or a grocery store or a fresh um, a market where we can go and buy some fruits and vegetables? So, you know, it's just being proactive and seeking things out. Now, I haven't personally done this, and I don't know if you have, Sia, but, um, you know, because there's grocery delivery services now in most cities, uh, we do know some people who, when they get to their hotel, they go online and they order some groceries from a local <clears throat> grocery store and they have them delivered to their hotel. Absolutely. Absolutely. And why not? And why not? And you can even, uh, uh, with some of those apps, you can put in your order and schedule a delivery time so that when you arrive at your hotel and check in, so does your food. Um, and but one thing, one important thing to remember is to make sure that you tell the hotel to empty the refrigerator. Some of those refrigerators are pressure charged. So if you lift a bottle, you get charged for it. So it's very important to make sure that the, the hotel is aware that you need your refrigerator space open and empty. At least that's how Dominic and I do it. And we always bring food that we can keep in the refrigerator that'll keep so we always have things around. Yeah, absolutely. And when we were in Greece, because, because you brought me so much food, it all wouldn't fit in our uh, hotel refrigerator. But um, Lisa McCarl, our travel agent that we were traveling with on that um, occasion, she had, it wasn't one like this, but it was something similar, but she uh -huh. had a little um, cooler. It was just an inexpensive one from like the grocery store, but it wasn't as insulated as this. So it folded really flat. And so she let us borrow that. And then we were able to just get ice from the hotel and put it in um, a Ziploc bag. And then we were able to keep that extra food that wouldn't fit in our refrigerator in a little cooler, which, you know, and, yeah. And so that works out really, really well. And, you know, and we were able to travel back home with that cooler because she told us you guys just keep it and use it. And um, she she had told us that that's what she does when she travels. She puts one of those in the bottom of her suitcase. That way, if they need it, they have it. It's an option. Some people will, if it's something small that they have, they'll use like the ice bucket that's in their hotel room. They'll put a plastic liner in it, get some ice. And if they've got it, just a few things, you know, that need to be kept cold, you can do it that way as well. Um, so that can work. And also we have traveled with our instant pot. I know, sounds crazy, but we have taken um, on a road trip, not flying, but I do I know some say, not Not in a plane, surely. <laughs> I do know some people who have taken theirs on the plane with them. If they're travel, if they're flying someplace and they're going to stay, um, well, you know, for a while, they will take theirs with them. They will let you um, take that on the plane with you. So you can get by with that. And there is a little three court and then there's a six court. But when we road trip, um, depending on what we're doing and how long we're going to be gone, we have taken our six court with us. And I have made corn on the cob, potatoes, cooked vegetables. I have done so many things in the instant pot. Um, and I did the most cooking in a hotel that we had that did not have a refrigerator and it didn't have a microwave. And one thing that you guys can use is if there's not like a counter space, if there isn't a, um, a, a desk to use, if it doesn't have a kitchen in it, 
open up that ironing board, put a towel on top of the ironing board, and you have a surface that you can use um, to food prep on. Okay. So um, it works. That's a good idea. Tammy, can I just um, interrupt for just a second? I know, um, uh, ironically, Tammy in the chat uh, is uh, traveling and she's talking about frozen hummus and soup. And I know that you have experience, I have experience with hummus. They took it away from me. They said it was too much liquid. So is there some guidance you can give to Tammy? I'm hoping that your stuff remains frozen uh, in your carry on bag, in your, or on your check bag. Oh, in your check bag. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, a great question. And I forgot to announce at the beginning, if you wanted to ask us questions, please do. We love the interaction. Let us know where you're watching from, which some people have. And um, if you want to put a question in, please preface with a couple question marks and end with a couple question marks. That'll just help it pop out to us. So here's the thing. You can get frozen hummus will go through TSA. Um, wow. When we travel, I will um, make hummus like the week before. I will put it in small containers that hold about half a cup and um, lidded containers, yeah. ones that I can toss. Here, Tom's yeah. going to show you a picture of some hummus. Oh, perfect. Okay. So you can see the little container back there and I will freeze it. And then you know, it will stay frozen for probably about five hours or so. And oh. that also works as oh, our ice it. pack. Maybe they didn't see it. I didn't have it on the right screen. Oh, I think, could you see it, Sia? Could you see it when he yeah. did the picture? Yeah. yeah, they saw yeah. it, Tom. Oh, well, no, yeah. it's it's hidden because we're not, we're not there. Oh, yeah. yeah, now we can see the container. Correct, Tom. You were right. Okay. There we go. There so, we go. So this was frozen. Right. And so... Okay. Um, so we just freeze it first. Now, some people have told me that they were able to get, put us on split. Some people have told me that they've gotten through TSA with hummus, but more often than not, it was because mm. they didn't see what it was. Um, they didn't see it in your, you know, when you were going through because they will confiscate it. They will confiscate hummus. They will confiscate, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet, Tom. I'm just showing you it's queued up. Okay, great. Um, they will confiscate. Um, people have told me they took their cooked sweet potatoes and mashed them. And those got confiscated as well. Any kind of nut butter, they won't allow to go through in just a container. So, um, and, you know, there's going to be an exception to every rule. There's going to be some TSA agent that missed what you had or let you take it. But... Um, the rule of thumb is that they do not allow that type of consistency. It's too close to a liquid. And I don't know what the reasoning is. I don't know if explosives could be hidden. I don't know what it is, but freeze your hummus and your hummus will go through. If you do a baked potato or a sweet potato, leave it whole or you can slice it, but don't mash it because. Uh, okay. They'll, they won't let that through. One thing that yeah. you want to do, whether you're flying by plane or train, if you're flying international, you know, look up the airline, see what they will allow you to take into another country. There are certain countries where you cannot bring in any fresh produce. So you can have something cooked, but you can't have something that's fresh because they don't want the um, threat of some kind of a bug or something on that fresh produce being introduced into their country. So you have to um, just check and see, like Greece let us bring stuff in, um, you know, different countries will, and some countries won't. <laughs> see is not surprised. She says she's not surprised. Um, and so, um, and so Did you I even go through customs in Greece. I, well, I mean, what can you I pick say? up your suitcases and you walk out the door. That's it. I know. I know. They just let you. They're like, oh, we're glad you're here. Spend your money. We're glad you're totally. here. That's Come why I'm laughing. The, I'm laughing. Come on yeah. into the country. Um, so I, I do think that um, your frozen soup should be fine. 
if you pack the little um, the little ice packs that are for coolers, those will go through as long as they're frozen. But once they've thawed, they won't allow those through again. And so uh -huh. only take them if you know you're going to be able to freeze them again for your return trip or you're okay leaving them um, wherever you have traveled to. Liquids in for the at least for the United States, liquids in a 3.4 ounce container or smaller are allowed and they have to all of your liquids have to be in the, that size container or smaller and all must fit in a one quart plastic bag so in order to get through T, T, TSA it's whatever you can fit in a one quart plastic bag containers that are 3.4 ounces or less and you can go to the TSA website and you can see what they consider to be liquids and, you know, toothpaste, um, hairspray, uh, mouthwash, all kinds of things. So, but check that list. And they do make exceptions for children. So I did travel a lot um, when our kids were little um, and um, I've traveled with our granddaughter on a plane and they do make exceptions for children so you know if you're traveling with a child you know you can have some things for a child that you can't have as an adult but look on their websites and um, check that out so one thing that we do is we do take food with us when we travel and um, we were talking about hummus one thing that i do with hummus is when I make that fresh hummus and then I freeze it, I go ahead and make a batch and I dehydrate it. And so Tom's gonna show you, I'll show you in a minute the powder, but Tom's gonna show you, this is from our most recent trip that we went on to um, Panama oh. and Costa Rica. Oh, got a queued up. There it is. And so I dehydrate hummus and then I run it through the food processor um, or my spice grinder to turn it into a fine powder. And then we reconstitute it with some bottled water. And that gives us a nice little um, protein to have on the way home. And so we had some Mary's Gone Crackers. I think we um, had some a little bit of um, fresh vegetables to dip in it. And that way we have something that is healthy to eat on the plane on the way home. And you can dehydrate so many different things um, and reconstitute them with water. So, um, so, so think about that if you do have a dehydrator, because not only do we like to plan ahead of what we're going to eat on the way to someplace, but what are we gonna do on the trip home? But as C and I said, hunger is not an emergency. If we can't get something, we are okay just drinking water. And well, let's also remember that um, there's a psychology when we travel. Uh, it happens in the movies. It happens in certain places. We better find something to eat. We got to eat something. We should find something to eat. And it just happens. It happens in the mind. Um, so if you you know you got like a three or four hour flight. Uh, or something like that, and it's not international. Oh, I don't know, maybe even a 20, 24 hour flight. Dr. Goldhammer assures us that we can fast. And so it's that idea in our minds, we better eat something. I better have enough food. It's it's the panic over, I'm, I'm not gonna have enough food. And, and those were the mistakes that Dominic and I made when we first started traveling. Uh, post-COVID, whole food plant-based, because before that, we didn't. We just traveled not living this lifestyle. So we made a lot of mistakes, um, like, you know, don't add smelly things to the food you're taking on the plane, um, things like that. So we just keep it really, really simple. And like those containers you're talking about, those, you know, three and a, uh, three and a half ounces, uh, we call them 100 milliliter containers, and that's what we're allowed. Like I'll put like a mustard dressing in there. And then like you were saying, just some steamed potatoes. And then you have another little container. Maybe it's full of microgreens. 
um, and then another container of some nuts. So all things that are dry, easily eaten, you can finish it on the trip. But again, it's not an emergency. You're going to be okay. Drink some water. And, and I think a lot of the panic about traveling is in our minds because we want, we remember how we used to travel and we want to believe that we're going to travel exactly the same way. Well, we're not, but we're going to learn a new way to travel and it's possible. And that's the good news. Yeah. And just keeping it simple, being real, keeping it simple. That's what we have to do. And, um, and um, I do want to share, I have a friend who um, went to Europe and like the whole family went, extended family went, and she was the only one that was whole food plant-based and she didn't want to be bogged down having to take a bunch of food with her on the plane. And so she just decided that's going to be a good day for me to just water fast. And she said yeah. the interesting thing was she was the only one who did not have jet lag. Well, of she course she was fully hydrated. Yes. <laughs> So she drank tons of water. She didn't have any food going right. that day. And she said she felt great and everybody else was just dying. Well, sure, because you're fully hydrated, you're moving around, your body's not trying to do something at altitude, you're changing. There's a lot of pressure on the human body when we fly. And so, again, keeping it as simple as possible is, is our best choice. The more water we drink when we fly, the less inflammation and edemas will form. So these are things to keep in mind. And, and the most important is just don't panic. Don't panic. Right, right. Don't panic. Okay, I think, Thomas, you'll bring me the, um, the suitcase pantry. I'll do that next. So Ooh, how exciting, the suitcase <laughs> pantry. So, y'all, I'm going to show right. you. Um, I'm going to show you what we take with us. Hey, Reeves is in the in the chat. Reeves from Well Your World. Hey, Reeves. They, her cool. and Dylan just got married um, a couple weeks ago. So congratulations. We're so excited. Cool. For you congratulations, all. guys. That's awesome. Okay. So when we go on. Are going to stand up now? Okay. You want me to? Maybe. Well, so I can unzip it. Maybe. Yeah, you can go adjust the camera. I'll stand up. So when we go on a road trip, if we are going to be gone for quite some time, which sometimes we'll go for two weeks and we love to go hiking into national parks and so forth, I will pack what I have now dubbed as my suitcase pantry. So I just want to show you and I like it depends what I take is going to depend on where we're going and how long we're going to be gone, and whether I could find any restaurant options for us. So I don't take all this, just so you know, but I've got it just packed full of, it's my disclaimer, so that y'all don't think I'm crazy. Um, oh, honey. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, okay, so maybe you do think I'm crazy. I don't know. And I would, and because I wasn't packing it for the trip, I just was pulling stuff and putting it in here today. But um, so I utilize most of it. So I always take extra bags because if I make stuff in the hotel, we're probably going to need um, something to put it in. So I'll take, you know, my stasher bags because these are washable and reusable. But I will also reuse those um, plastic bags. Uh, it's important to have a dish towel a dish cloth and a hot pad. Okay. And then also down in the very bottom. Oh no, it's right here. Here we go. And a lightweight little cutting um, mat so that we have something safe to cut on and it doesn't weigh much. So, it, and it doesn't take up a lot of room. And then I'll just take like, this what? is, this is a paring we'll knife. The wrong camera. Okay, here we go. This is just my paring knife. And Tom just, you know, he just makes yeah. me a little sheath to put it in. Um, it, I showed it to him, Tom. Yeah. And then I'll take a pair of kitchen shears because these come in so handy. You can cut vegetables up with these. You can open up bags. You can do all kinds of things with these. You can cut up 
your lettuce with those fresh herbs if you um, get some fresh herbs for travel. And then this is just a paper um, towel roll from the center. And then, you know, just so we don't get cut, we'll just do that. And then I'll take my chef's knife with me. So that way I've got some tools so I can do some work. So these are my quinoa banana oat muffins. And we always travel with these. And so what I will do is, you know, like the week before we're going, I'll make them and I'll put them in my freezer and then um, I'll take them frozen. So I'll, if, we, if we're doing air travel, we take these with us or if we're doing a road trip. And I always pack enough so that we have some that we can have for the return trip. Now these do need refrigerated. So once we get to our destination, if we're flying, they go in my hotel refrigerator. If we're traveling by road, if we have a hotel refrigerator, it goes in there. Otherwise we keep it in our cooler. Also in the show notes underneath here, you will find a link to my Amazon um, associates shop. And I have a travel section in there and um, I'll have like the cooler that we use and various things that I talk about today. So you can see um, what I'm talking about uh, again, if you want to look it up or if you want to purchase it. So these are very, very hearty. And so we can have one of these and an apple and a potato and that can be a meal because our meals look different when we're traveling and we're really okay with that. So let's see, what else do I want to pull out right away? Okay, so these, you might wanna do the top for me. These are from Well Your World, and these are a couple of the seasonings that I really love. So the chili lime and the fiesta, I will take these with me. When we're doing a road trip, I'll take the whole container because I've got room for it in this suitcase. Now I can, I can get, um, beans and rice in a restaurant and I can sprinkle some of this on it and make it taste really delicious. So if you have seasoning mixes that you like, maybe Mediterranean or Italian, I know I have some more in here um, to show you, then these are really great to take with you so that you can flavor something plain that you get in a restaurant and make it taste really delicious. So we have a link for Well Your World um, in the notes underneath the video. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you get access to those links. If you're watching on Facebook, hop over to YouTube and check them out. Then I also have the Well Your World cheese sauce and the banana pancake mix. Now, I would not take the whole container because these take up too much room, but you can pop some of these in um, a silicone baggie or a um, Ziploc baggie, and then you can take these with you. You can take a picture of the instructions with your phone if you need to. This is like an instant cheese sauce, and this is a pancake mix. So easy to use. So if you're staring in a, staying in an Airbnb, then it's perfect for that. They also have a mushroom gravy. This is like instant mushroom gravy. And so put some in a small container, take it with you. This can make your food taste so much better. And this I'm super excited about. Maybe Tom, you can do a close up of this. This is a new product that they just came out with. And this is, got it? This is a veggie broth mix. You guys, this is so good, so easy to use. And so you can take this with you. You don't have to worry about buying veggie broth because this is instant. It dissolves really well. And then you can make really flavorful things in the Airbnb or even in your hotel room. Those work great. And Tom's going to show you a picture. Now, these are not available yet. But next month, they are going to come out with five brand new SOS free soup kits and you just add water. So you can make them on the stovetop or you're going to be able to make them in your instant pot. And this is going to be a great addition to our travel 
um, food. It's there. Those are definitely going to go in my suitcase pantry because I won't have to think about it. It'll just be easy. Um, just follow the instructions, make something with those. It's going to be great for traveling. And but just remember, those are not available until May. OK, so don't go looking for them yet, but you'll find our Well Your World link will be underneath the video where you see the more click on that and then that will take you to it. So um, let's see. What else do I have in here? Oh, OK. These are my chickpea croutons. I always make a batch of these or a double batch to take with us. These are made from chickpeas. I air fry them. They're seasoned. They're crunchy. Once you get them totally dry in the air fryer, then they will not go bad. They will last for weeks. And so we can have these as a snack while we're traveling. We can order a salad someplace and sprinkle these on top of the salad so that, you know, we've got some added uh, protein and fiber, and they're so delicious. So um, we take them, whether it's a road trip or air travel with us. The recipe for these is on the blog, as well as the quinoa banana oat muffins. And the reason we take the quinoa banana oat muffins is they're very, very sturdy. And because they have quinoa in them and oats, they're full of fiber, they're full of protein, they're extremely um, filling as well as being absolutely delicious. Now, another thing that I'll pack, this is the Joy Oat Milk Powder. So you can't always find plant-based milk when you're traveling. And so this is um, a really nice alternative because this is oat powder. You just mix it with water and it turns into oat milk. So it they call it instant dissolving, which is super great. I wouldn't take the whole bag. I just take it in a container. And then um, if Tom decides he wants oats, you know, we can take and, and put oats in a container along with hemp seeds and chia seeds and some nuts. And that can be a meal. It's really easy. Then you can add oat the oat milk powder, and you can add a little bit of water, and you've got a nice bowl of oats. You can eat it cold, or you can heat it up in the microwave, um, whichever way you want to do it. They also do have um, milk bases that are creamy, and these are shelf stable. This is shelf stable, so they don't require refrigeration. I just think the powder is much easier to travel with than the um, bases that are creamy. <clears throat> so we have a link for those also in the, the note. There, there, um, well, this one, you would only take this with you if you're on a road trip, because this, this would not go through TSA. You could probably pack it in your suitcase, but not your carry-on. But I, I would be concerned about the jar breaking myself. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Let's see. So these are beans that come, maybe the overhead for this one, honey. These are beans that come in the little um, Tetra packs. And so I get these at Whole Foods, but I have seen them at Target and other stores that come in these little packages and they don't require a can opener. And because it's not a tin, it's lighter weight. And so you just pull up the sides of it and then you cut the top off and of course this one is glued down pretty good and doesn't want to pull up well wouldn't you know normally it's very easy this always happens right so you pop it up and then you take those shears that i showed you and you just cut it open we usually also take with us a little um a little strainer a little mini strainer so that we can strain the beans in our um, hotel room. And so what are you going to add those to? Well, we buy these packs of rice that are already cooked. They are cooked, they're shelf stable, and they're one ingredient, organic jasmine brown rice. And so you really have to look at the packages because 
Some of them will have oil and some of them will have salt added to them. So there's a grocery store here called The Nugget. That's where I can find these. You might also find them at Whole Foods or a health food store, or you can purchase them on Amazon. It is higher priced on Amazon, but they, they come in different, like this is forbidden rice already um, cooked. So, and then I think I have a white rice one in here as well. So what we do is we will add the beans and you can get the black beans. You can get kidney beans in the Tetra packs and we will add the beans to the rice. We'll go to a grocery store and we'll get some cilantro to add to it. We'll use the Well Your World um, chili lime seasoning or if we if you don't have that, you could use salsa or you can just take some chili powder with you and some cumin and add that. And that can be a delicious meal for you. And we love Mexican food. So we love beans and rice and corn. And we will just, if we're traveling on the road and have a cooler, we'll um, put some frozen corn in there. It helps keep everything cold. And then when we get to our destination, we have that to help make bowls. You can buy some greens locally and add some greens to your bowl. And Costco, our Costco is selling these right now. Which number is the overhead camera, Tom? And so um, our Costco has these right now. These are also shelf stable, brown rice, um, you just heat it up, eat and eat. And that's what we love. It's super easy. Do you have any of these products in Greece, Sia? Nope. No. Okay. I know we're nope. so spoiled and so fortunate. You okay. got, I know. I even posted in the chat. I'm like, did this well your world deliver internationally? And I was told, no, I don't think so. And no, they don't do because yeah, the shipping is so expensive. Yeah, I'm sure. So, but Kathy Taylor had a great idea. Um, order a bunch of stuff, send it to my mom. And when I visit this <gasps> summer, bring it back. There you uh, go. That's a great idea. You should totally do that. So I'm this is just to. a little bottle of dish soap. I always take this um, with us as well. And um, we'll usually take some kind of a, a bowl with us so that I have something to use for a dish pan. Because a hotel won't have it. An Airbnb will have, you know, a sink, but you can't always count on a, a hotel. Okay, so then these I also travel with. These are from California Balsamics. And these are little 3.4 ounce bottles of flavored vinegars. So I have garlic here and the, um, hickory, the smoked hickory. And oh, the glare is pretty bad on those here. Is that better? And so these will go through TSA. Um, you just put these in your three quart and your one quart um, bag. And these will go through TSA just fine. And I always I double bag them so that if something does leak, it doesn't get all over my stuff. But these you can add to potatoes and rice and vegetables and all kinds of things to give them nice flavor. You can order a salad. And, um, you know, a lot of times I will just ask if they have balsamic vinegar. Most restaurants now do have balsamic vinegar. And I'll just ask for a side of that and make sure they understand you don't want the balsamic vinaigrette. You just want the vinegar. If they don't have that, maybe they have red wine vinegar or um, maybe they can just give me some lemon or lime wedges that I can squeeze over the salad to make it delicious. Okay, there is also tofu that comes in the tetra packs it's shelf stable um this is this is not the firm look for one that's firm if you want to be able to cut it up and use it um, to put in a burrito bowl or to make a tofu scramble or something like that but um, this is really great for um, road trips um, and being able to cook your own food as well as this is jackfruit that is um, in a shelf stable container. And I think I got this at Whole Foods. It was either Whole Foods or um, the health food store. And then you can mix this with some chopped onion and 
Um, you can, you know, flavor it Mexican, Italian, however you want, add it to some rice or potatoes. And um, it's just a nice way to make a fun little meal when you're traveling. I like the um, sun-dried tomatoes. Um, these I get from Trader Joe's. And you can just, you can add these to salads, rice, potatoes, whatever, you know, your salad, anything, um, just to give it a boost of flavor. And those are yummy and don't require refrigeration. These are freeze-dried berries. So um, if we can't have, if we don't have the opportunity to pick up fresh fruit where we are, I always do pack some either dried fruit or freeze-dried fruit so that we have that um, as an option to add to whatever meals that we can get. Now here is the hummus that I dehydrated. And this was actually, this was left over from our last trip. Maybe do the overhead, Tom. Um, and it's just kind of a nice little powder, if you can see here. And I find that if I grind it in the spice grinder, I get a much finer grind of it. And then it makes a smoother, creamier, okay, I'm done with the overhead, a smoother, creamier um, hummus for dipping. But we're okay if it's not like the same consistency of when I make it at home because we're traveling, you guys. Okay, so then from... Um, the Wellbeing Company, which is a local company run by um, two wonderful ladies here in California. We get these, they're called Wellbeing Bars. And these bars are made from, these are made with beans and nuts and there's dates and there's no added sugar and there's um, different flavors that you can get and they're shelf stable. And so we take these everywhere with us. They're great for road trips, um, traveling by plane. Um, Sia, you got to taste these when when we were at the NHA conference last I year. I did. I did get to sample some of those at the conference. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was and interesting. It was, they're, yeah, they're they're pretty good. Yeah, I like them. Yeah, they are. They're really great. Um, we like like Tom. If he goes for a bike ride, he'll pop one in his, you know, his um, biking shirt. If we go hiking, we'll take them hiking with us. Um, and we always travel with them. We'll take a lot of them with us when we travel. If we can't get a meal, you know, this and a piece of fruit can become a meal. There is half a serving of legumes in each bar. And um, we also, we have a discount for you. Um, and the code is is down in the show notes for, right for that if you get the variety pack but they've also since um in the last few months they've come out with these these are muggins and what these are is it's a little mix and you can make microwave muffins out of these so these i think would work well for travel so this one is chocolate and it tastes like chocolate cake or a brownie. This one is savory. It is Fiesta Chipotle. And it tastes uh, like a Mexican corn muffin. Ooh. It's so good. And these are made with beans, you guys. Bean flour. So, and no sugar. There's no sugar in them. So this one has yellow cornmeal, almond flour, oats, buckwheat, flaxseed. I mean, it's just all healthy stuff, delicious, and so easy. So, so easy. They're very, very fun. Great for travel. Oh, this is one of my um, stasher bags. I like these because they're silicone. You can see what's in them and um, reusable. So nice for the environment. Okay. If we're road tripping it, we'll take these canned lentils with us because you can make these into maybe the overhead. You're on your I'm over, I just, well, silly me, I just need to go closer. I gotta go the right way. <laughs> Here we go. Um, and these, these lentils, this one is a lentil um, chili beans. They also have lentils, they have different ones, look for them. So you can easily, you know, add a can of 
tomatoes, canned tomatoes, some of the Well Your World broth and a little bit of water, add some of that frozen corn, and you can make you a soup. Um, even if you just have a microwave, you could make a soup. And these are local spicery mixes that I like. I like the Greek um, one and the Italian herbs. And so you can take these with you again, just to season your food to make it tasty. And if we're, you know, if we're going to be going into a restaurant, I have little containers. Um, you can, I have some stainless steel ones, but I just grabbed this plastic one here right now, but you can put a little bit of seasonings in these so that it fits in your backpack or your purse. So you don't have to carry that whole container. Now I'm going to share this product, you guys. And I'm not, I'm going to tell you up front that I'm not crazy about it. Okay. But a lot, but a lot of people use these. I know she's it's, laughing at me, food. but it's food. I'm not crazy about them, but these are Dr. Greger endorses this company. It's, it's, um, leaf side and you know, you'll see little ads with him in it from time to time. And these are dehydrated meals. And they're um, SOS free. They do have a line that has salt in them, but then they also have, have you tried these, Sia? Nope. No. Okay. And so the, the issue with them is you have to order, there's a minimum order. I think you have to order like 10 or 12 things when you oh. order from them. Um, and you, and it's a subscription service, but as soon as you place your order, if you're not intending to be on their monthly subscription service, you can cancel your subscription. So they're dehydrated. You need boiling water. So I do have a few friends that use these when they travel, they travel a lot and they take a stainless steel bowl with them. And even on a plane, they'll ask the flight attendant if they can have, you know, like two cups of water. And then you put the water in, you mix it, you put the lid on and you let it to, yeah, yeah. Well, they have hot water because they make tea. And so they have hot water on or boiling water on the plane. And then you put the lid on and you let it set for um, 10 minutes and then you eat it. Now, Tom and I have tried a few of these and we're not crazy about them, but in a pinch, they will feed you. Um, we haven't found one that we love yet. None of them are so bad that we couldn't eat them. So don't get me wrong. <laughs> but but some people really like them. And so, um, so I'm just letting you know that this is something that is available. Now, the breakfast ones are good because they have oats and dried fruit in them. And the same thing, you you know, add the boiling water. And so I think the, the breakfast ones are good. And they also have a line of smoothie mixes. Um, so if you, you know, travel and take a mini blender with you or have access to a blender when you travel, then, you know, that could be an option as well. Um, but also, it could also give you some ideas of what you could dehydrate. So, you know, you can make your lentil soup or what you know something that's thicker that you can actually spread out on dehydrator sheets and you can dehydrate and make your own dehydrated food we also like when we're doing a lot of hiking sometimes we will buy some hiking dehydrated food um, packs um, the problem with them is they are loaded with sodium so, but you can look and you can usually find some vegan ones that don't have oil in them, but they will have quite a bit of sodium. But we don't worry about that when we're hiking because we are sweating so much that it's okay. So, um, but you know, you, you could try them <laughs> you can try and see what you see, what you think. And and my friends that use them, when I ask them, you know, which ones would you recommend? They're like, none of them are that great, but they're just like emergency food. I'm like, okay. So, but I just want you guys to know that that option is out there. And then this is my own um, chocolate um, cake in a mug. And this is my own mix. The recipe is on the blog. And so you can make these up. I would not take them. I make them up and keep them in my pantry in these little canning jars. If I was taking it traveling with me, I would not take it in the glass jar. I would put it in one of the silicone pouches instead, because just because of the weight 
of it. But you, you know, you just add some um, milk to it and stir it up and you can make cake in the microwave. Ooh. So, um, so yeah, so that's what I have for that. And then what we do, I'm going to let you take this, Tom. What we do, um, we eat a smaller salad when we are like going on the plane. If we are road tripping it, then, uh, you know, we'll take our regular salad container. We'll chop our salad before we leave. We'll put all of our stuff on it except for the dressing or the vinegar. And, um, and then we'll pack them in our cooler. And that will be for our first day. And then we will take salads with us. If we're road tripping, we'll take our wood bowl with us and our mezzaluna knife and we'll chop the salad in our hotel room. Or you could use the shears. It just takes a little bit longer. You could use the kitchen shears to do that. Um, and, you know, we'll we'll take um, our salads, our batch prep salads, and we'll put them in gallon size Ziploc bags because those don't take up as much room in the cooler. And then, but we'll, usually we eat a little bit smaller salad when we're road tripping just because our containers take up so much room. Well, now I can't get the lid off. Oh yeah, show them that. Really okay, well this is, oh yeah, we take popcorn with us so we can pop popcorn in a microwave. And that's just showing you that, that little, um, if you have a little zipper pouch in your suitcase, that's where we put our um, seasonings, our bottles of seasonings so that we can find them. So, um, and we, we take a bowl, we take a big spoon with us, um, you know, there's an arrow latte in the pocket there. I see for stirring. Yeah, there's an arrow latte in there. And so um, I buy these containers. Uh, I think I got these like at Walmart. These are um, for batch prepping food. They're plastic containers. And this is what we take with us. And so if we're able to wash our containers when we're traveling, we'll wash them and reuse them. Um, but like sometimes when we are flying, we don't have access to be able to do that. And so then, you know, I'll unfortunately, I'll have to toss them in the trash. But, um, but it allows us to be able to, you know, take food with us and travel. And then if you want to bring over the um, portable stove. Okay, so we're crazy. We have a portable stove. It's a little oven that we take with us when we're doing long road trips. Okay, I learned about this, you guys, from, um, I used to follow this truck driver that was um, vegan, and he would share how he could cook food, get this, see ya, in his semi-truck. My father cooked in his semi-truck as well. I don't think he had that fancy box, but uh, he found a way to cook. Um, after he had his heart attack, he changed his diet completely, and... Uh, found ways to create food in his semi truck. I love truck. that. I yeah. absolutely love that. Well, there's a, I can't think of her name now. There's also a female trucker that posts on Instagram and she also, she has an instant pot. She has an air fryer. She's got all this stuff in the cab of her semi. And so you can make it work. So um, we have this on our Amazon store. You guys, we have used this so, so much. So it plugs in to your car. Tom, can you do that so that I don't break a nail? Um, it plugs into your, I know, it plugs into your um, car. Here we go. So this is what, this is what it looks like inside. And so it becomes a little oven. So you can buy the, um, the aluminum disposable um, bread pans to fit in here, but we didn't want to use the aluminum. So I bought a uh, silicone loaf pan and then we cut the top of it, trimmed it so it would fit down inside of here. So now we have a nice little silicone liner in here. Um, which works great. And so we have baked potatoes in here. So we, so we were coming back from Las Vegas from a conference that we went to. And I went to Whole Foods before we left and I bought potatoes, washed them in the um, hotel sink. We had a little kitchenette and then I just put them in here and 
we left early that morning. And by the time we stopped for lunch at a little park somewhere in Nevada, our sweet potatoes were cooked beautifully. Oh my gosh, it smelled so good in our car. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then I had made a salad. So we had sweet potato salad and fruit. And it was wonderful. And we had leftover quinoa banana oat muffins. And so that made like we had a feast sitting at this park. So what I've also done is I have taken the already cooked rice, the tetra pack of beans and frozen corn and some cilantro and put it in here and let it heat up while we're, you know, traveling from one destination to another. And then when we get to the, like we were going hiking. And so when we got to the trailhead, then we had this hot meal that was ready to eat. And nice. I had, you know, fresh limes and we squeezed it over. I mean, if there, if you have the will, there is a way to eat healthy, no matter what you're doing. One time I made that same meal. It was pouring rain. We were on a road trip. Um, we couldn't find a covered area to stop and eat. So we just stopped at a park and we ate in our car and it was pouring rain but it was so great because we were sitting there eating this delicious hot meal it was so fun so you know this this little thing um has come in super handy we've used it a lot and um and it works it works really well you guys um if you where's the that little the little guy maybe show give me that one next um here it is. Thank you, honey. I told you I was going to put you to work today. Okay. <laughs> so this one is called a Hot Logic. This is a Hot Logic Mini. Now, um, Tom has a black one. I have this blue one. And it is this little insulated bag. And it has this little heating pad in it. You see that? It's very lightweight and thin. And this will plug in, it will plug in in your hotel room to the outlet, or you can also, we have an adapter and you can plug it into the adapter so that you can use it in your car. And then some of them come with the Pyrex container and some of them, you um, depends on what you find. Some of them you have to buy it separately, but this is a little Pyrex container. Does it tell me how much this holds on it? Six cups. I think it's a six. May, I don't think it's six. Do you think? I don't think. Well, let me check the. Check and see. But it's an eight by eight. No, an eight by six by two inch. It doesn't tell me um, how many cups it holds. But you can put your food in here and then you can heat it up. So you can do that in your hotel room, your Airbnb. You can get the adapter and you can do that in your car. When you're um, going down the road, you can be heating up your food for lunch in it. So um, there's just, I'm just showing you guys lots of different ideas because there's so many ways that you can make travel work for you. You know, Tom, when, um, before he retired, he traveled every week. And when he would travel, we had a cooler for him that plugged in and um, had a little fan on it. It plugged into his car. And so I could send him all kinds of stuff. He could take salads, um, fresh fruit with him. I could take thing, uh, pack things for him that he could heat up in his hotel room. Um, that way he could eat healthy while he was on the road. He would stop at Whole Foods and hit the salad bar so that he could get a great big salad every day. And he would, you know, send me pictures every day of what he was eating. Um, and so if there's a will, there's a way to do it, you guys. Always. Okay. Always. Yeah. Always yeah. when there's a will, there's a way. And the thing is, we don't have all this fancy stuff, you see. Um, right. And so there's still a way. Because yes. there's still a will. So, um, you know, we find our own way, Dominic and I, but a lot of it is a lot of the, the products that you're showing, you know, like the bars and the muffins that you make, we do th similar things. Like we'll make our own, you know, chocolate uh, cookies or savory buns and take those with us. Always make sure we have enough nuts with us. 
uh, for energy and proper fat levels. And also as far as greens, do you know what we do? We buy bags of leafy greens that are, you know, triple washed and mm -hmm. those weigh nothing. And I put like five or six bags in my carry on. And is it optimal? Like the best way to eat greens right out of the bag? No, but I'm still eating greens. So I'm still doing okay. So it's about making adjustments and things. Now, I wish we had all these beautiful products that you guys do. Um, I, I would love to, to have fun with that. Uh, but for the, for the time being, our travels will have to remain simple. And we use a lot of those, the, the same plastic containers that you were showing because they're BPA free, uh, microwavable, dishwasher safe, uh, which is really important in what we're storing our food. So um, I, I am in awe of all of these wonderful toys and gadgets. And um, I'm hoping I can find a way to get some of them into my life. I'll see. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And yeah, it doesn't have to be fancy. I mean, um, you know, we're very happy because we've been doing this for so long. Sia, we're very happy with very simple food. Um, so, you know, I'm happy to go to the store and just buy some potatoes and maybe corn on the cob or frozen vegetables and heat them up in our microwave in our hotel room and, you know, um, take one of my seasonings and season it. And, you know, that's like, we're very happy with that. And then we'd also, it saves a lot of money. It saves time. Not that we don't want to go to a restaurant because we do, but after a while, even on vacation, we get sick of restaurant food. Well, you know? sure, but also, also this this keeping it simple. It's, um, you know, how do we live this lifestyle? How do we keep a clean nutritional profile whilst traveling? Well, we make sure that we don't expect to eat everything we eat at home whilst traveling. Traveling is a different reality. So we make adjustments scale it down, keep it simple, get the basics, get what you need, and you will be okay. But it doesn't have to be fancy. Just make sure you're getting the basics, you know, your food group goals. Right. So um, another thing that I, I didn't show, oh, I've got two things that I want to oh. talk about. Okay. I know. Okay. Um, okay. So one is that like when I'm going to go um, visit um, family in Nebraska, I oftentimes I will ship stuff. I'll, you know, like a week ahead, I will um, get the, in the U S we have a box. It's a flat rate box, depending on the size. It, it doesn't matter how much it weighs. Once you packed it, you can pack it as full as you can get it and then you can you know ship it for a flat rate and so i will get a flat rate box and then i will i will send stuff that i know that i can't get there you know and um then also like my quinoa banana oat muffins i will make my own mixes of those with all the dry ingredients and i do this throughout the year i you know that i made muffins fresh this morning from a kit that I had made because I will prep four to six of those at a time because um, that just makes it easier, right? Well, I mean, if you're prepping, just, you know, prep batch, batch cook, batch prep, have things ready. You know, if it's going to keep, mix it all together, whatever makes it easier and more accessible is going to be more successful. So I love the idea yeah. that you have all those just jars of muffins waiting to be made. Yeah. And so I batch prep those, but I will take a couple of those batch prepped ones. I'll just put it in um, a baggie, a Ziploc, and um, I'll take it with me because then I can make my healthy muffins fresh at, um, at my mom's house. And then things that I like, like I know she's not going to have pumpkin seeds and she's not going to have Brazil nuts and she's not going to have flax or chia. And so I'll go ahead and grind those. And then I will take packets of those with me. Or, you know, if I don't, if I don't think I'm going to have room in my suitcase, I'll put it in my box that I ship ahead. And, you know, and that way I can just still have the foods that I want. Um, 
I also, I learned this from Chef AJ, for things that I make regularly, I make up the spice mixes for those things. You know, I'll do like four, I usually do four. So, you know, like if it's a certain chili or um, my Alfredo sauce or whatever it is, when I've got the seasonings all out, I'll go ahead and make four jars of seasonings. I can take those with me when I go visit somebody or if I'm um, we're on a road trip and I know I'm going to cook in our Airbnb or her, our hotel because then I don't have to take all those spices with me. I can right. you know, just take that little packet and then I don't have to buy all that stuff when I'm there as well. Um, and so, you know, that just allows us to, you know, still eat good and um, have fun while we're traveling. So um, I'm just wondering if people have any other questions for us about this. I can't believe an hour has gone by already. Well, I've been checking the the chat and it looks like, um, you know, there weren't a lot of questions, but a lot of really good ideas and information. People asking for links, it's all in there. I just put in a comment that um, is if you're looking for whole food, plant-based SOS free travel, there is one place in particular um, you will find it and you will find it work free. It's called the National Health Association and they have amazing things. Tammy, may I please share the screen? Yes. Thank you. There you are. So this is their page on plant-based travel. They work with Windstar Cruises and Lisa McCarl. So there's a lot of information and they have tons of trips all the time and they're popular. So, I mean, from Tuscany to Iceland, oh, by the way, uh, my first NHA Windstar and Lisa McCarl trip is coming up to Iceland. I'm very excited about that, to be attending that. Uh, so I'm excited. And then, I don't know, I think I just want to bring this to your attention. In 2025, I will be hosting an NHA cruise um, uh, with Lisa McCarl uh, to the Mediterranean Explorers, so Italy and the Dalmatian Coast. At any rate, there are more trips. You don't have to do that one, but check this out. This is all whole food, plant-based, SOS-free, meeting NHA guidelines for food. Um, all you got to do, Tammy, as you know, is pack some stuff for the plane, get here, get to your location, have some stuff for your hotel, find someone, a SIA in that area to cook for you or do all the wonderful things Tammy shared. And then once you get on that boat, Everything is safe, everything is compliant, and everything is beautiful. So it kind of takes the work out of it. So I hope you'll consider the NHA Windstar Travel Cruises with Lisa McCarl. It, they are incredible. I'm really excited for my first one. And now, after today's show, I'm going to go have to buy a, bunch, a whole bunch of toys. Oh, Linda, see you in Iceland. Awesome. Just saw that in the chat. All right. Great. Yeah. So that's exciting. So I'm excited to try some of this stuff and order some of these things. I'm oh, good. Well, talking about the NHA, we've been on three of the NHA cruises with the Windstar Cruise Line. And, um, you know, Tom and I were able to lead the group that went to Panama and Costa Rica. And the chefs are incredible. They're so into um, making this food for us. They, they had even brought in a, flew in a pastry chef just to make desserts for us on the Panama, Costa Rica trip. And the desserts were phenomenal. And so um, it is stress and worry free. And, you know, it's like an amazing array of food. We, we ate there on the uh, Windstar cruise pretty much like we eat at home. Ah, oh, great. Because there were yeah. incredible salad bars. They, you know, Wanda and Lisa have worked with them extensively. And they have ground chia and ground flax and all kinds of nuts and seeds. And, Brilliant. you know, yeah, I mean, you, you know, it is a really great way um, 
to travel. Then when we were, um, and I highly recommend it, the Windstar cruises are smaller cruises. They are more boutique cruising is what it's called. And a lot of attention to detail is what they pride themselves in. They all get to know your name. Um, they know your quirks and your likes and, you know, you go in the dining room to sit down and they go, oh, Tammy, Tom, you know, do you, do you want, you know, your glass of water, um, you know, whatever. Um, they just get yeah. to know you. And so it's really fun. I think you're going to have an amazing time, Sia. Um, I'm very excited. I'm very excited about it. Yeah. And to not have to yeah. worry about the food and get to eat. I mean, they make everything beautiful you know, so everything is like plated. I mean, it's, it's cruise food, but it's whole food, plant-based SOS free. And they plate it beautifully. And if you yeah. do have a spouse or a travel partner who is not whole food, plant-based, and they want to be able to order off the regular menu, then, you know, the accommodations can be made right. so that you can um, travel with someone who isn't whole food plant-based as well. So talk to um, Lisa about that. Then when we were, I don't know if you remember, Sia, when we were at the NHA conference last year in Cleveland, um, last June, there was a gal there and she had the Veg Johnson Journeys. I don't know if you met her or not. Okay, so she, she, had, she was a vendor and she had a table um, set up and she doesn't, she doesn't do cruises, but she does land-based travel. And they do like some things here in the U.S., like national parks and um, oh, wonderful. yeah, Vermont in the fall, different things like that. And so what they do is she hires a, um, a chef from, um, oh, I just lost, I was thinking of the name of it. Um, Dr. Barnard's organization, um, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, um, Food for Life. They hire a Food for Life chef. Oh, and right, they okay. rent, they'll rent like um, a house and he does, he or she does all the cooking. And so yeah. they can make you SOS free food. And then as a group, you, you know, do different tours and things. So no. That sounds great. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, we do have a couple of questions um, before we get, because I know we're over. Marianne has asked two questions. What type of cooler or portable do you use to travel on airplanes? And do you request vegan meals on international air flights? Marianne, my, I can answer the second one. Yes, I request vegan meals. And no, I don't always eat them. And no, they don't always give them, even if you request them. So I, I do it and I go through it and usually there's like some fresh fruit or some salad and I can eat that stuff, but I don't eat the, the, the cooked food that they give me. The cooler or portable, Tammy, what do you use on airplanes? Yeah, yeah. and on the vegan meals, we've experienced the yeah. same thing. And because I'm also yeah. gluten-free, I usually can't get vegan and gluten-free. And I so I just rely on taking my own food and I, you know, most of the time I don't worry. I, we did find that the, um, the airlines, the European airlines did a much better job of the vegan food than the, um, oh. um American based. So like Tom was able to, like, I can't remember when, I think when we were flying from Germany to Greece, um, he got, um, like a delicious vegan sandwich, you mm -hmm. know, they had for him on the plane. So, um, but they just didn't have anything vegan and gluten-free. So, you know, depending on what your, your parameters are and your eating style is, you know, I mean, you can try it and, and see, yeah. it doesn't hurt to well, request it's definitely, it. It's definitely better to just order it because, and when you book your tickets so that you know that they're not going to bring you a carnivorous, they're not going to bring you animals. So they're going to bring right. you something. It may be okay. It may be not. There may be something salvageable in there, but at the least, you know, they're not going to ask you, do you want chicken or steak? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it yeah. doesn't, doesn't hurt to, to try it and see what you get. And, you know, and, some, and sometimes I will go ahead and get it because it's usually not enough food, whatever comes to feed Tom, but then he can eat, 
mine too. Yeah. Like on the yeah. on the vegan sandwich, you know, I went ahead and took one, and that way he had two sandwiches to eat. Right. You know? Is that so, the cooler you use when you travel on a plane? No, but you this size you can get this size. Tom, will you go grab one of our um, other cooler bags? So this size, but one that's more collapsible. This one does collapse, but not enough. But if you like. All of the grocery stores here sell these lightweight coolers that are like four dollars that completely collapse and and go really flat. And so, just find yourself a lightweight but, um, but if cooler. you totally collapse it, how can you uh -oh. take it on the plane full of food? Um, yeah, you can you can take a cooler. This is this is a cooler okay. lunch bag that was actually designed by an um, uh, air flight attendant. Um, yeah. And so she, they designed this because they needed something that would fit under the seat for them when they're working so that they could take their own food. It's very well insulated. The inside zips out. Do you remember what this is? This is e-bags, it's called. That looks beautiful. And, yeah. And so, and we use these as our lunch bags. Um, when we are um, just going to be gone for the day, going to our daughter's house. So you have a compartment up here where you can put, you know, like I usually put like tea bags, napkins, cutlery, that kind of thing. It's got a zipper pouch there. Then the inside liner does zip out so you don't have to get a new one if it rips or something. It's well insulated. And then it has gusseted pockets that nice. are on both sides so it gives you i usually put my water bottle which i'm going the wrong way my water bottle in one and then like my uh, cords to charge my devices i'll put in here and then it has this nice pocket on the front here it's also gusseted and it has a zipper section here as well so i'll put like tea bags in there my um, yeah. vinegar bottles will fit here this is an elastic pocket and the vinegar bottles will fit here and those eight cup um, containers that we use for our salads will fit in here with room for fruit and you know right. all kinds of and extra you said those stuff. fit under the seat right they were designed to fit underneath the seat yep. this was designed Perfect. to fit underneath the seat yep Perfect. now i will tell you we have not taken these on the plane with us i learned about these from my friend, um, Nancy Matthews and her and her husband do use them on the plane. Um, what I use when we're going on the plane, because I'm freezing so much of my stuff, I'm freezing hummus. I'll take my grapes and I'll freeze grapes because frozen grapes will, um, help keep everything cold. And, um, they're also delicious when they're they're delicious yeah. to eat frozen it's like mm, it's so good and so it's just, this, sugar. it's just pure good sugar yeah yeah oh absolutely so this is um my osprey little backpack and this is what i take on the plane and so i will take a small purse and i'll shove it has this extra pocket here and i will just shove my small purse in here because you're allowed two things two items on the plane and so a personal item which this counts as my personal item and then a carry-on and so i'll have my carry-on but then in here is where i will put my food and because my hummus is frozen and i'll have frozen muffins and usually like the frozen grapes that will keep everything cold in here because i'm only taking enough food in here to feed me for the trip going someplace right. and right. so i don't feel like i need a cooler for that because i'm not taking you know i'm taking those um those chickpea croutons that i've cooked in the air fryer those are shelf stable so you know i try to take things that don't require long refrigeration and need to be you know need to be kept really cold so i'll just put all my food down inside of here this holds a lot it'll also hold my laptop or my iPad in here as well. And this this thing, I can really pack it. See how it expands? I can sure, really yeah. pack it. 
And um, because I have sciatic nerve issues and I have scoliosis, it's really difficult for me to carry like a heavy bag over my shoulder. And so mm -hmm. I like a backpack because then it, the weight is evenly distributed across my back and doesn't, you know, doesn't cause me um, problems, especially like if you have to run, you know, if you're, you have a, a connecting flight and you have to run right. through the airport, right. you know, having that backpack um, works great. So that's, that's what we, that's what we do. Um, and then, Excellent. you know, th that hummus will stay frozen in my backpack for hours and hours, you know. Perfect, perfect, that's just wonderful. Yeah, and I mean, let, let's be honest, backpacks are better for everybody than shoulder bags. So let's, you know, let's protect our, our bones. Um, yeah, but I like that idea of, yeah, just take enough, you know, for, for the plane, which is what, right. you know, what we usually do and then put other stuff in, in our check luggage that we know we'll keep. Um, and the idea of, uh, your idea of freezing, the muffins and the grapes and and having those things cold in the backpack serves as like you said ice packs so it can help the other things even stay more stable so sounds like you guys have got this down to a science this is awesome you guys taught us all a lot well you know we've done a lot of traveling and so you know it's trial and error you figure out um what will work for you and um and don't be afraid. I mean, go try. If something doesn't work, it's okay. Right? That's true. And then, That's true. Well, you know, a lot of things haven't worked. And um, we've we've had to throw away suitcases because things leaked. And we're like, okay, note to self, don't do that again. So it's little things like that. But yeah, try and keep trying and, and keep traveling and exploring. Um, yes. Oh, Marianne wants to know, what's the name again of the sea cooler bag? Of the um, the e bag cooler, the cooler bag, the e she e bag. Wrote she wrote C, but yeah, everyone else is talking about e bags here. So. Yeah, it's the e, it's the e bag. Now I don't know if they're still available right now during the pandemic. They weren't uh, available. Tom's going to take a peek and see. And then somebody's asking about this Osprey. I got this at REI. Do you remember what size this is, Tom? It's it's the Daylight Plus. This oh, backpack, this it's the Osprey Daylight Plus. I think you can probably find it on Amazon as well. Um, I bought it at REI, and um, it's been great. I've had it for a couple of years now, and and the great thing about this is then when we get to our destination, I have a backpack because we love to hike, and so then I can you know, load it up for, a for our day excursions and mm -hmm. for our hiking and that kind of thing. So, to oh, Tom just added it to our travel page, you guys. And awesome. then we also, we also take, oh, here it is. We also take our own water bottle. Now you cannot get water through TSA. So, um, we take this empty, but we pack our water bottles and we take these empty. And then when we get inside the airport, most airports now have water stations um, right. because they're trying to help us cut down on using plastic. And so, um, you know, we will buy bottled water if we if they don't have a water station, but our local airport has a water station. So as soon as we get through TSA, we go to the water station and it's cold water and we fill up our water bottles, and then we have these for us throughout our trip, wherever exactly. we are, and and we just refill them. And if you go on the on the cruise, Sia, they deliver um, filtered water to your room every day. And oh, so, well, that's and, very kind of them. Dominic and yeah. I also travel with our water bottles emptied uh, in yeah. our carry on. And as soon as you get through, like you said, there are water stations where you can find a place to fill it up. And then, you know, because they're our bottles like yours are insulated, it keeps the water cooler as well. And on the flight, flight attendants have absolutely no problem with filling your entire bottle. It makes no difference right. to them. So they're more than happy to keep you hydrated. Yes, absolutely. And and you can, you know, you can find water most places. And so, and that yeah, saves you a ton of money. It's, you know, eco-friendly 
to do that as well. And, um, you know, if you do carry like your own um, cup with you, which this, um, we have these in a little cup too. Um, most places, if you have your own cup, like the, the coffee shops and stuff in the um, airports, they will let, they'll fill it with hot water for you for free. If you don't have your own cup, then they'll charge you like 75 cents or a dollar. So I always carry my own herbal teas with me that um, I like to drink. And because most places they have like chamomile, I don't want chamomile. Um, you know, I, I want other things, ginger lemon and, you know, some different things. And so I'll carry my own with me and I'll just um, buy hot water. Well, there you go. So, Excellent idea. So Excellent idea. Works. All right. Okay. So I hope, um, I hope we answered everybody's questions and I hope that, um, you all took away some, um, ideas today that will make your travel easier and, um, you know, less stressful. So Tom, Indeed. did you have any? I mean, Tom, you guys are amazing. You really taught us all so very much. Okay. Oh, Tom said he found a knockoff e-cooler, oh, e-bag. So um, he's going to put that on our page oh, cool. as well. So, so in, because we know that it fits underneath the... Yeah, it's 15 by 8.6 by 9 high. It's the same size. Same size. So and it'll fit yeah, underneath as well. The same too, if you look at the photo. Okay, you want to put it on? Yeah. Here. Um, okay. But, but yeah, here's, here's, yeah. There it is. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty much. It's, 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 a, it's a knockoff. It's a knockoff, but it looks oh, like they... Here, you're on the wrong one. It looks like they copied it pretty good. There it is. All right. Okay. Right. Well, well, this was really fun. This was fantastic. Um, I uh, wish I had access to even uh, a portion of the products that you all have access to. Um, I, I hope that you are all appreciative and grateful to all these amazing companies for making these amazing foods so that you can travel well. And I hope that you guys will support all these amazing companies uh, as often as possible. And I definitely will be stocking up for my trip home from the United States this summer. Um, thank you, guys. I, I, I'm absolutely positive I've learned more than I've offered, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's not true, Sia. Um, oh, no, it is. I've learned a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Well, um, you're welcome. Th this was really fun. I just want everybody to travel and have a good time and not stress about it. So um, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, we will not be here next week where we have some other things going on next week, but we will be here the following week. And Sia and I are so excited because we are going to have um, six guests on with us who are going to be sharing their amazing plant-based journeys with us. So we hope that you will join us for that. And um, we will be sending out an email about that. Seal will be sending out an email. Make sure you are registered. Make sure you are subscribing to 60 Living as well as um, to Nutmeg Notebook. And um, we are going to um, have a great day that day. And what's the yes, date of that? See it. Is that the, April 30th. 30th. That's the 30th. April 30th? It will be April 30th, 11 a.m. Pacific and two o'clock Eastern. And I don't even know what time that is in Greece. Nine o'clock at night. Oh my gosh. And you look fresh as a daisy. Well, I appreciate that. It is now 25 to 11. Oh my um, goodness. So, yeah. Well, you know, you work through. Yeah, way past bedtime. All right, everyone, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, please. That really helps our ratings here on YouTube. If you liked this video and want to share it, we would love it if you would share it in some of your Facebook groups, um, your plant-based Facebook book groups or on your personal Facebook group, just click that share button and share it as well so that we can help other people enjoy plant-based traveling um, in, a, in a fun and easy way. So uh, 
Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Tammy, and I help you get healthy and stay healthy one meal at a time while you're traveling. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye.